Ahoy hoy! Welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be my last day covering spooky buildings and doing stuff related to Halloween as I don't think I'm going to have enough time to make a video before Halloween. Um, so today I want to conclude my little, you can say, short spooky series by talking about two places today in Maryland. Um, Glendale Hospital and Glendale, Maryland. And um, I think the other place is called, uh, yeah, like how I'm gonna say that. It's basically the ruins of St. Mary's College in the town of, and I'm gonna fuck this up, Eelchester. Uh, like it's in um, Elliott City, I think. So anywho, let's start off with um, Glendale Hospital. Um, so I'm going to read from you from a link, and I'm going to put that link in the description box and stuff. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, in the early 1930s, uh, at the height of the Great Depression, a tuber, ugh, fuck me, a TB basically, um, which is short for tuber tuberculosis, everybody butchered that word, oh well, epidemic swept through Washington, D.C. As hospitals in the city became overcrowded and overflow, patients were sent to hospitals in neighboring Maryland and Virginia. It became clear that a dedicated facility was needed to handle the outbreak. That dedicated facility came in the form of Glendale Hospital, built in 1934, to meet the needs of... Tough. I'm just going to say TB, guys. Okay, TB. TB patients and to help the spread of the disease. <laughs> yeah. Although tuberculosis, also known as TB, and historically as consumption and the white plague, had been known by medical professionals since human antiquity, the question of how to treat it was largely based on guesswork. Moreover, due to its high rate of contagion, people diagnosed with TB were typically isolated or even shunned. Yeah, that happened back then. Um, many were sent to live out the rest of their lives in rural sanatoriums. The patients' families would frequently tell friends and neighbors that the infected relative had died rather than admit to a TB diagnosis in the family. Um, the preferred treatment for TB at the time consisted mainly of prolonged exposure to sunlight and fresh air. Thus, Glendale Hospital was built as a sprawling 216-acre campus of 23 buildings separated by open, expensive lawns. I said expensive. I meant to say expansive. My bad. See, I'm not the best talker sometimes. I'm sorry. Um, blah, blah, blah. Rooftop gardens were installed and intended by patients to further encourage them to spend as much time outside as possible. Underground tunnels, now flooded and decrepit, provide a passage between building and inclement weather, but otherwise all transit and activities took place outdoors whenever the elements permitted. In the 1940s, doctors discovered that antibiotics proved much more successful in, in treating TB. As antibiotics became more widely available in the 1950s, the number of TB patients at Glendale Hospital dwindled until, in 1960, it was repurposed as a nursing home and hospital for indigent patients. The, the facility was finally closed in 1982, the year I was born, um, due to high levels of asbestos in the buildings, as well as spiraling costs associated with structural upkeep. It has sat disused and moldering, mold moldering? Uh, and I guess they meant molding. It says moldering. It doesn't sound right to me, but oh well. Basically, it's been molding a lot uh, since then. Although police regularly patrol the grounds for trespassers, the ruins of the Glendale Hospital continue to attract graffiti artists, ghost hunters, local teenagers, and other curious explorers. It, simula it similarly attracts urban legends, with the most popular tales claiming that the site was once a prison for the most site. Ah, oh, fuck! I messed that up. Tales claiming that the site was once a prison or an insane asylum. There are vague plans to cover, convert the grounds back to a nursing home at some point in the future. However, the considerable asbestos re remediation costs combined with the restrictive requirements associated with redeveloping the property 
have yet to attract a successful bid. So for now, the hospital remains abandoned. It's been abandoned for about 30 years now, at least, or 38 years. <laughs> it's been the same year I was born. So, what you know before you go, um, <laughs> don't. <laughs> Mainly because, like I said, they, the, the area is patrolled by police to, um, stop trespassers. So, let me just read this tidbit. Know before you go, Glendale Road passes right through the center of the hospital campus. You can see much of the hospital and its grounds from the road or the Washington, Baltimore, Annapolis Trail. You know, it's a bike trail and walking trail which practices directly behind the property. Entering the hospital buildings is prohibited and police are stationed at the abandoned hospital watching for trespassers 24-7. So in other words, don't go. <laughs> um, and they mainly have that for safety reasons. I mean, other than asbestos being the problem and the tunnels are flooding sometimes and it's decrepit, um, some of the roofs on some of the buildings have collapsed, so it's a major safety issue. And I and the only time I've seen it, I've seen some parts of it. I've seen the tower from the road, and I've seen um, the back part of it from the bike trail. But other than that, I have never gone to it because I know it's dangerous. Um... I have heard one person who used to work with me um, say that she went to there one time and um, they went through the tunnels and she she saw a dead body of a drug dealer and stuff and it's like, mm, no thank you. I'm there for the ghosts, not there for the dead bodies and stuff. So that's one place. And um, it's also, um, let's see here. I know... Glendale Hospital is also, um, uh, let me see here. Yeah, it, it's currently on the list as of 2014 on, um, the Pre Preservation Maryland, um, the, which is basically a list of threatened historic properties because it is you know, really, 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 really bad there. Um, and, um, let's see. And it is added to the National Register for Historic Places as of November 18, 2011. Um, there is an award-winning, um, article that was posted in the Washington Post magazine in 2006 by a former staff writer and author, and her mother was hospitalized at the um, sanatorium in the 1950s. And there was like an emotional fallout from their family and stuff. Um, and she gave, an, uh, and this is the daughter of the patient, she gave um, a lecture on the grounds of Glendale on the 4th of October in 2008. Because it was the first time the public was allowed to be on the grounds. Um, in almost 30 years. So, yeah. Um, too bad I didn't go to it because I was in Sweden when this happened. <clears throat> Sorry, thirsty. So, um, I'll, I'll also list that article in the description box too so you guys can read it. Because it's a very good article and very eye-opening and very, oh my god, what the hell is this? Um, Mainly because of what happened to her mom, basically. Which made me shook my head when I first read it. Okay, so that's Glendale Hospital. The second place is... The Ruins of St. Mary's College, because I cannot for the love of me say the freaking town's name. It is spelled... I... Probably... Oh, Ilchester. Shit, my dumbass. Ilchester, um, it's in a wooded town, or a wooden area, and it's basically on the ruins of St. Mary's College. <clears throat> um, the college opened in 1862, and it was once a lively seminary for young men trained to be priests. 
Over 100 years later, the number of students began to dwindle until the seminary was finally closed or shut down. It says shut down in article. I said closed, whatever. In 1972, it closed. Ten years later, the site was purchased with the intent of being converted into apartments. The proposal failed, leaving the building abandoned. In 1988, another purchaser brought the property, but constantly had to fend off vandals and curious teenagers as the site has become... Um, basically named Hell House. On Halloween night in 1997, the building was burned by arsonists. The site was finally demolished in 2006, so basically the year I moved to Sweden, this place was demolished finally. Evidence of St. Mary's College can still be found in the ruins left behind. Several disturbing tales have circulated about haunting happenings at this location. And yes, this place is more accessible than Glendale Hospital. Um, as far as I could see, there's nothing to prevent you from going there, but here we go. So, some of the things that remain are this. So, some of the things left behind or weren't demolished is the stairs. There's several sets of stairs remaining among the trees. Some of them are still in good condition like this one is. Um, and I'm getting this from only in your state regarding Maryland. <clears throat> this is another thing. Um, another stairway left behind. Many visitors have heard the sounds of footsteps echoing up and down the abandoned stairs. Reports of feeling cold spots throughout certain areas of the ruins have been reported even in the su summer months. That thing looks terrifying. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it was used for, but it looks terrifying. Um, this part, this, this tidbit is interesting. Actually, I'm going to pull away from that for a second. Because <clears throat> they're showing ads on this site, and I don't want to be copyrighted for that. So, um, so, one report was a group of young men who were exploring the ruins claimed to have spotted the ghostly figure of a girl. As she approached the group, she raised her hands towards them. And her eyes began to glow red. That is quite a claim. The boys immediately fled in fear and later shared their story, worrying others. I swear, if I see someone's eyes glowing red, I'm I'm gonna jip too. <laughs> the most prominent feature that still stands is known as the Hell House Altar, and I'm going to include that in the thumbnail so you guys can take a look at it. Um. It's basically this arch and the little altar, apparently. Many allege that the altar is the location of satanic rituals, including animal sacrifices. Some locals believe it was these rituals that conjured demons to the property. Would you dare enter the grounds of St. Mary's ruins? Yes, yes I would, until I see that little girl with glowing red eyes, then I'll flee like a banshee. Um, so yeah, um, and let me double check to see something to make sure, uh, double check where it illustrated is, because I said St. St. Elliot City, and I just want to make sure it's there, not somewhere else. I didn't want to do an oopsie. <clears throat> Okay, uh, okay, so it's in Howard County, um, and it's an unincorporated community and stuff. So the town itself is not a ghost town. It's just the ruins and grounds of St. Mary's College that is basically, you know, a ghost town and whatnot. Title's a little bit misleading in the article. Um, and it's a suburb of Baltimore. Hmm. Let's see, I just, because uh, uh, the reason why I said Elliott City initially is that Elliott City is thought to be one of the most haunted places in Maryland, let alone the nation, uh, but uh, I just want to make sure this place isn't nowhere near that first. <laughs> okay, well, this place, um, Ilschester, is about six minutes if you drive there from Elliott City, so it's not far away. So I wasn't too completely off. Okay, well, 
now that I've cleared them up, I hope you liked today's video. Would you, well, <laughs> would you visit the ruins of St. Mary's College? I would ask if you would visit Glendale Hospital, but I don't think the police there want me to try to promote people to go there since you're not allowed to go there. But would you go to Elliot's, would you go to um, the ruins of St. Mary's College to check it out? Would you not? Um, I know that my spooky series for right now is over as of today, but if you guys want me to check out other spooky locations, please tell me, and then I can do those next year when it's October, okay? So even if, even if I don't cover something right now, uh, it doesn't mean I'm not going to cover it in the future because, you know, it doesn't hurt to get more material and stuff, so yeah. So, if you like this video, hit like. If you subscribe, I'd be absolutely joyous like anything. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.